Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSGO News and kind of a breaking news story. Obviously not our regular CSGO News upload time, but I hope you guys all enjoy the two a day. If you guys missed this morning's video, I'll link it down below for all of you. And thank you all for watching all the great comments as well as we keep on growing. Over 78,500 of you fools are still watching, so thank you guys very much. And please leave a comment down below what your favorite story is. Let's hop into our first one though. In breaking news, at the point of you guys watching this, I'm sure a few of you guys heard about this. 100 Thieves have officially released their entire CSGO roster. Now I'll link their post down below as as well as on screen for all of you a little brief detail as to why we talked about it last episode it was pretty clear there was more than just one visa issue on that squad of course they released KNG he also had was known to have visa issues and apparently there was more than one and accordingly to them as well it was so bad they're gonna release the entire roster now even more painful to see as well is ESL Pro League does start in a couple weeks here the major just happened we're not sure what organizations are really wanting to sign a team right now and especially a team who's already pulled out of Katowice pulled out of Star Series these guys have been locked in place under the 100 Thieves organization for five months time and you can't even imagine the amount of money they probably invested into this squad into this roster especially because they had to release them from their contracts early who knows what kind of severance pay or you know pay to leave they were actually had to pay out to these players they are now free agents though they can play anywhere they want and of course it's a pretty well-known team and arguably could be a top five roster if they get a fit member there so definitely some interest from other organizations but what other organizations have the money right now to sign these guys as, as well as at a short notice we probably won't see them sign for a couple weeks. I'm very excited to see who they get signed by, but overall, just a, a kind of a, well, I don't want to say a laughing stock, but a lot of the replies we've seen so far, what do you guys think about this? I know a lot of people are saying karma, man. Just because KNG was a part of your organization, that's karma. I do not blame them at all for what KNG did. Those were his own actions. I do feel bad for 100 Thieves, though. Once they got big money investment, they got their League of Legends LCS spot. I feel like they just threw money at the best team possible available in CSGO before really looking into their problems visa-wise, and that kind of just bit him in the butt. So apparently right now 100 Thieves will no longer pursue CSGO. What do you guys think about that? That was in just brutal news. On top of that though as well, we have an interview for all of you which I'll link down below. One very important part listed by Guardian, of course currently a member of FaZe Clan. He did make sure to note guys that FaZe Clan will be his last CSGO team he ever plays for. It was really touching as well if you guys want to watch the full interview. What a great guy. Just You can see it in his eyes. You can see it in his eyes. You just the way he talks about CSGO, the way he talks about his family. A really good guy. He also makes sure to mention though that FaZe Clan will be his last team he ever plays for once he does retire from CSGO. It seems he might be planning for a baby boy in the future as well, which is pretty cool to see. And here's what he had to say, though, about FaZe Clan being the last CSGO team he ever plays for. Do you think this is it for you now? This is the home you're going to end your career on, potentially, whatever that may be? Uh, when I was talking to my wife joining FaZe or staying in Navi, uh, she was definitely for changing. At the same time, I had a talk with my wife about it that this is probably going to be my last team in my active CS career. So I will give everything to CS and to this team until I, I quit CS. So soon some baby will come. Yeah. So I don't want to be the kind of player that is drowning a lot and then I'm missing most the most important years of my child. So sooner or later I think it will come and FaceTime will be the last team. And you guys also may have heard of this story a couple days ago but thanks to my friend Raffle Monster, he's actually a big trader out there. I'll link his Twitter down below if you guys want to check him out. He does some great live streams. He told me about this a while ago and I'm sure you guys saw it. OP Skins promoted this as well. During the finals of course the FaZe Clan as well as the Cloud9 final guys there was a big souvenir Dragon Lord drop with Skadoodle sticker on it and it was actually recorded now as the, the most expensive CSGO skin ever sold in history for just over $61,000 USD. That's that's, that's just insane to see and of course going to show it to you guys on screen as well I just I can't imagine I really just can't imagine actually buying this but apparently the guy who did buy it now owns I believe it's 10 factory new souvenir dragon lures this of course being the most expensive one and Scott daddy has a sticker on it so apparently worth well it's not necessarily worth over 61,000 but that was what was paid for it which is insane to see I mean that's that's some humans out there that's the average adult here in the US plus some that's their average salary per year spent on a, a pixel or, or I guess several pixels that was just crazy to see Guys, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm really hyped up today. I still, I, I actually found a dark chocolate version. I hate milk chocolate, so I went back to our library here at, at, at uh, the college I go to, and I found dark chocolate ones. So I am caffeinated, boys, and I'm still waiting for a sponsor, which does remind me. Today's episode is brought to you by CS Money. If you guys want to trade your CSGO skins out there, the arguably probably the best website, the website I use the most as well for CSGO skin trading. My link is down below. Thank you guys so much for all of you who use it. Anyway, though, on to our next story, but thank you, CS Money, for the sponsor. I, I, Always appreciate it. And also in very exciting news for all you Australian people out there, I actually had a very, very, uh, very, very few Bulgarian comments in the comment section yesterday, but I asked who is from Bulgaria, and we had a few comments 
Mets out there, but also for all you Australians, you got to be happy as for the second straight year, we have IEM returning to Sydney, Australia. Uh, we, they did so back in 2017 with only eight teams and a $250,000 prize pool, which is kind of unique to see. A quarter of a million dollar prize pool split amongst eight teams. If you're invited, you're pretty much guaranteed a solid chunk of change. But this year, doing it right, guys, here in 2018, returning to Sydney, Australia in the Opera House, and they will actually have 16 teams still to be determined and still to, uh, actually invite some teams, and I'll have teams qualify as well. So I cannot wait, and especially, especially I'm very happy for all you Aussie fans out there. I feel like every tournament played throughout the world elsewhere, the Australian people always get screwed over in terms of time zones. So it's great to see another CSGO tournament uh, eventually down there in Australia. So on top of that as well, very last in today's episode of CSGO News, we do the return of Seat Summit Round 2 this time. If you guys missed Seat Summit last year, it was one of the better known events for being kind of down to earth. If you guys don't know what it is, it's pretty much a gaming house um, as well as all the commentators, all the analysts, all the players all stay in that one gaming house uh, when they're actually playing the games itself. It's a very down to earth atmosphere. You feel very close and when you're watching CS Summit, it's a very chill atmosphere, very, very relaxed. So it's not like a very formal setup. We have to talk, you have to say this. All the analysts, all the commentators take it kind of like a really funny uh, funny way of just kind of talking about whatever they want to. It's very, very chill atmosphere. Unfortunately though, we do the new talent pool and I say unfortunately, there's still great talent there. We have Launders and Stunna to be the new talent. On top of that, of course, Sean Gare is going to be joining the crowd as well as nothing. So that's some great player commentary. I say unfortunately though, because I expected Steele to come back. He was very well known for CS Summit 1. He's a very monotonous guy, but he also just has a way of being kind of funny without wanting to be. And I, I do like his style of commentary. So unfortunately enough though, guys, Steele was not invited back. But besides that, some great talent for CS Summit 2. And that's going to be a fun event to watch in about 9 or 10 days. Uh, it should start next week, uh, next weekend actually. So cannot wait for CS Summit 2. It should be a very fun event. As always, thank you all for watching. I should see you guys tomorrow in about two days with some more CSGO news stories. Thank you all for the great comments down below as well. As well as this comment, Johnny, thank you very much. The comment of the day on yesterday's video. Yes, I, I mispronounced Stiko. Is it supposed to be, is it Stiko? Is that, is that what I, got, I went wrong there? I do apologize. Thank you for the comment for correcting me in a very nice manner. Hope you guys all enjoyed. As always, my name is Jake Mariah, like you. I'll see you in a couple days and uh, I'm going to leave. All right. Goodbye.